Hi, I'm Paul Potratz with Helderberg Defenders, and today I'm going to go over a custom build. This is for both of the D90. And in this video, you'll see some of the unique characteristics that we did on this build, and it'll help you design your own build. It'll help you understand what the parts are and what your options are when you're doing a bespoke build. First, let me start with the word bespoke. A lot of people ask me, what does bespoke mean? Bespoke is a British word meaning custom. Like for example, you could get a bespoke suit, a custom suit fit to your specific size, needs, and style basically. And that's what we do with Helderberg Defenders as we build custom defenders. I've been designing these trucks for a number of years so I can help you through the design process to make sure that your defender is a build that fits your daily lifestyle, the things that you want to achieve with it, and also we will make sure that it will last for a lifetime, never being basically outdated and that we never overbuild, we build just right. Meaning I keep the classic looks, but I give the modern design, the modern components, the modern technology, the modern comforts. So there again, you have the classic looks, but it becomes the ideal daily driver that's comfortable to drive, something that you'll really enjoy and something that you can pass down to your children and their children. So starting with Verboska the D90. The first thing we do is we always start with a 300 TDI motor. That's a diesel motor that has a turbo and it's fuel injected. The reason we use the 300 TDI in the US and then the TD5 in Canada is because of the longevity. Also too, we do not, I just wanna make sure that we, you understand this, we do not do Corvette conversions, V8 conversions, we don't do anything like that because that will create a truck that's called a Franken truck just like Frankenstein. And what it does is it seriously decreases the value of the vehicle and makes it become really a, just a nightmare for your mechanical upkeep because then who's gonna work on it? Do you take it to a, a Chevy mechanic or if it's a Dodge Cummings, where, where do you go? You have to go to the dealership. So we believe in simplicity, but we also believe in longevity and we believe in dependability. And that's what the 300 TDI motor will give you is that dependability and you don't have spark plugs. It's highly fuel efficient. There's a lot of things that you can do to modify, which we do on these engines. So it gives you everything you want. It's a great driver. It has plenty of power. It's fun to drive. And best of all, it keeps the value appreciating. It will continue to go in value versus if you do a Franken truck, it will decrease in value immediately after you purchase it. So to kind of give you an idea of value, what the Land Rover Defender has been doing Last year, it went up an average of about 24%. This year for 2021, they went up in value by 37%. And that's not a fluke. They've been doing that for the last several years. In fact, Business Insider Magazine and Forbes Magazine, they do an annual report of the top 10 vehicles to purchase as an investment. That's right, I mean, people do buy vehicles, me included, as an investment because they continue to go up in value. So the Land Rover Defender, a true Land Rover Defender, which I'll get into, is going up in value. And in fact, it's outpaced the stock market for the last 10 years. So you can feel confident that you buy a Defender and it will continue to go up in value. And the best part is you can even drive it. It's not like you have to park it and baby it that you will lose value. You can drive it as much as you want. Beauty the beauty point of this 300 TDI motor is if you ever needed to replace the motor, which it, it will go for well over a half million miles, but the motor is very inexpensive. You can put what's called a short block 300 TDI vehicle, I mean motor, you can buy one of these for about $3,500. The parts are very affordable. I mean, a water pump on one of these vehicles is about $64 and it's easy to find people to work on them. You can find any European mechanic that works on a Mercedes, a Volvo, even diesel mechanics that work on Ford or Dodge that are independent shops can work on this vehicle. There's not a lot of maintenance though. That's the best part of it. Parts are easily accessible. You can have any part on this vehicle at your doorstep within 24 to 48 hours here in the States. So there's really no reason not to have one. 
because a lot of people can work on it regardless of how small your town is. Parts are readily available. It doesn't take anything weird. Oil changes are like any other vehicle as long as you're doing oil change for a diesel. So you can go to Jiffy Lube and get the oil changed because they're changing oil on a Ford, a Ford uh, diesel or a Dodge diesel. All it is is a Shell Rotella oil that you can buy at Walmart, Advanced Auto, AutoZone, or wherever. All right, so let's get into Verbosca the D90. Verbosca the D90 is a true British Defender. And what I mean by that is we only start with left-hand drives. We do not do right-hand drives and switch over. It's only a left-hand drive and it's a British built Defender. The Defenders that we stay away from are Turkish Defenders, Spanish Defenders, Japanese defend, uh, Defenders, and South African Defenders. And the reason being is they don't demand the they don't have the value and the parts, the components are not the same because they're truly not, um, they just don't have all the same parts. So we are keeping British Defenders, original left-hand drive is what we're doing, and we keep the numbers matching. That's a unique point about Helderberg and why we, you know, what we do is the number on the body, the number on the frame, and the number on the engine block are all matching the original British registry paperwork that we provide on the vehicle purchase. By having those matching numbers, the value continues to climb. All right, so Verbosca. Notice the front end fascia here. So on the front end, you'll see the headlight surrounds, the headlights, the marker lights, the grill, the bumper. These are all options that we talk about on the bespoke build process. So when I'm designing a Defender, I'm designing a Defender based on what's the look, what's the feel, what's the persona that you want to achieve, and also how are you going to use it? Some people really like soft tops, like Verbosca, or maybe you want a hard top. So again, we start with the front end, what is the design, what is the feel, and everything has to match. If you look at this vehicle, you will see how everything flows, that it doesn't look like, look like there was parts added on, that it just flows, it looks good. And you probably see a lot of Defenders online where it just, you're like, something's not right, it just doesn't flow. So I'm very particular in the design that I do when I'm working with a client. So I never let a client make that mistake because I don't want to create a Helderberg Defender that is ugly or just doesn't flow. So you can be rest assured, if we're working together, I won't let you design an ugly Defender and I will try my hardest to make sure that you're designing a unique Defender too. So on colors, your color options are limitless and I help you on the color design. So this is a custom mixed color and we do a lot of that. You'll see a lot of our builds like, you know, in the back that they are custom colors. We will start with either basically a true British color, but it doesn't have to be British. It can be Italian, it can be German or whatever it could be. And, but we start with a color, like we started with this color, which was a very popular color in the 70s, and we added to it. So the design of this, I built this for a gentleman that lives on an island, and he does a lot of boating and a lot of fishing, so we carried that theme across. So looking at basically how he, how he dresses and the things that he likes and his interest and his hobbies, this is the design I came up with. Verbosca being an island, a very beautiful island, that's one of the reasons of the name. So we created this custom blue, and again, we can do a, a paint that's non-metallic, we can do paint that's metallic, and we can do a matte or a flat paint. But I will try to persuade you not to do the matte paint because the matte paint was very popular for a number of years and it's starting to die in popularity. So it could create that basically that timed look that it looks a little dated. But again, it's a bespoke build. If it's absolutely what you want, we can do it. But you just, you want to think about those things. So moving aside here, the arches. So that's one of the things we decide. What color are we gonna do the arches? Do we match the arches to the body color? We can do that. The bonnet, we know it is a hood. This is a Puma bonnet. You'll notice the hump in it, and that's pretty much all I do is Puma bonnets. I mean, we've done a couple that are the recess bonnets, but the recess bonnet is original heritage bonnet, hood, and it makes the truck look older, more classic. So if that's the design we're going for, we can definitely do that. 
but the vast majority, I would say 99.9% .9 of my clients like this type of bonnet as I do also. We can do the bonnet in a different color. We can do the arches in a different color. And then if we're doing a hard top, we can do the top in a different color. So it's really, what are we trying to create? So moving on with this, with the Puma bonnet and the arches here, I generally, and I'll say this again, I, I like the arches to be the same color as the body on most of the builds because it creates an effect that these were not added on, these were not an afterthought. So it looks very factory, very original is what's going on. So marker lights, we have options. We can do the colored ones here that has that heritage classic feel, or we can do all clear. So this would be clear on the rear and then of course clear on the front. When we do the clear, the LEDs are red or orange, depending on what they need to be, but you still have a clear lens. So you have three choices when it comes to this. You have the heritage look, like what this one, what Verboska has, which you can see more pictures of this vehicle and videos on, on Helderberg.com. So heritage look, we can go all clear, or we can do a smoke style. The headlight surround here is metal, and that's the way I'm generally gonna to try to take you on your build is to do metal, because it really is kind of sad to me that we do this beautiful build with a beautiful paint, ground up, rotisserie build, and then we put a plastic grill on it that's mass produced. These are hand, hand done, we do them. So this is a CNC piece that's cut out. This one has the Union Jack flag. I did a series of these, did three trucks with these, so we're done with the Union Jack. I won't recreate it again. So we have the metal headlight surround, and you notice we have this piece that's here, the lower piece, and then we have the upper piece. So this gives us a design option right here. We can do this in a body color, a black, a silver, whatever we wanna do it in. And then we could do this in, let's say, a, a brushed aluminum or a black, depending on what we're trying to do. Headlights, we have three different headlight options. These are the ring headlights that has a really nice ring. They have the look of jewelry is what it really does. And these headlights don't work on all builds, but it worked for this build, very classic. Let's put a little splash, it looks like jewelry in there. So the grill, it's a metal grill that's stamped out and it has that heritage look, that classic look. And this grill's not for everybody, but again, it's bespoke but it just fits with the truck nicely. I just did, don't want to do the plastic KBX grill on this truck because it just really cheapens the look is what it really does. So we have a lot of different grill options. Well, I say a lot. Easily, we probably have about eight different grills that we can choose that look good, that don't look cheap. And then of course we have the cast badge here, the Land Rover badge, which I really like. Moving on to the bonnet with the Defender letters, we can do these in silver, burnished silver or black. Um, I've had some clients say, can we paint it body color? And I will highly say, well, basically I'll say no. And the reason being is because the way these are created, if you paint, if you put body paint on there, that just, it won't hold, it will flake off in a few years and then it just looks a little ratty. And then when you're taking it off, it's quite a process to replace this and you don't wanna do that. So bumper choices, we have about eight different bumper choices. So we can do this galvanized silver, we can do black, we can do the ones with the LED lights that are the oval lights here. Uh, we can do bumpers that actually have what's called a nudge bar or a bull bar, which is a bar that comes up and goes across. And you'll see that on some of our builds. We have the rubber one that says Defender. We can do steel ones. We can do winch bumpers. So there's, like I said, probably about eight different bumper options. And again, look on the website and you'll see some of the bumpers. I definitely have some of my favorite bumpers. The one that has the oval or the rectangular LED lights, that you see in a lot of builds and it has the rubber caps on the end. Honestly, I don't really like those bumpers. You'll see that on some of my builds. Originally I did, but the metal's not as strong. It's just, um, and they can actually start to rust after a while. So, but we can definitely talk about bumpers. We can add accents like the, the ropes and, and that type of stuff. So, 
Moving up here, you might be able to see it, but you can definitely see it in the pictures on the website. This is billet aluminum. So these are vents that we come up with, silver, black. Um, of course, then you see the plastic ones. Those are an option that can go up here that has like the vents that they look like basically shark fins to grab the air. Um, there's also the snow cowl system that you can see on Emma, the D110 on the website, which is a plastic piece that folds over. So there's a lot of different options here, but I really love the billet aluminum ones because they just look so classy. The hinges that's on the bonnet, again, bonnet, is uh, they are billet aluminum cut out. We have different options on those. We can do those in a polished silver, a brushed silver, an anodized black. And there's, again, different options on that. The ones that are on the windscreen, windshield, they do, this does not fold down. This windshield does not fold down. There is an option to make a fold down windscreen. However, you can't legally drive it on the road with a folded down windscreen. It's against the law, but there is an option to do that. Again, those are aluminum and we can do those in a brush silver, a polished silver, a black anodized. So it's these little accents that help. The side view mirrors, billet aluminum, and then the arms that come out are also billet aluminum. So looking at this truck, it looks very classic, but I'll tell you in the side mirrors here, there's puddle lights. So there's little lights, little LED lights that are under the arms. So when you hit your remote to unlock the doors, set your alarm or un unarm your alarm, it puts a light down right around the door. A puddle of light is what it is. So option there. Mirror backs, we can paint those different colors. You'll see on some of my builds, the mirror backs are either black, they're silver, or they're painted the color of the, the Defender itself. So some other options I wanna tell you about. This is a, a trivia moment for you really quick. This right here, what would you call it? You'd probably call it a Fender, and it's not a Fender, it's called a Wing, W-I-N-G. So that's your Wing. So when we start talking on the phone and I say bonnet, you're like hood. I say wing, you say fender. I say windscreen, you say windshield. So you're starting to understand what's going on here. So on the top of the wing right here, we have the option to just do painted, which I like this look. It's a very clean look. However, you have to be cautious. The body is made out of aluminum. It is soft. So if you're going in to get an oil change, they have to be very careful if they lean on this. I don't know if you can see it, but it pushes down pretty easy. They can put a dent in this and then you won't be real happy. So it's just a, a precaution to take, but we can put the checker plate. It's not diamond plate. It's called checker plate because it doesn't have diamonds. It's checkers because we use the true British checker plate. So we can put this on here. We can put a black checker plate or a silver checker plate. But I will warn you with the silver checker plate, it gets that uh, cloudy, murky looking feel, look really quick. It just doesn't seem to hold up to the elements any longer than about three months. Looking at the marker lights, moving around, jumping all around here. We can also put the protection plates over these marker lights. You have two options on that. You have metal or you have plastic. But I will tell you, the metal ones look dingy really quick. You can put the protection grills that go over the headlights, and those only come in metal. The only thing is they are metal, so you're putting steel against aluminum. They get dingy looking, and it can create galvanic corrosion when you do that. So this is part of the build process, because you see a Defender you like, and you're like, that's the look that I want. I'm gonna do my best to give you the look that you want, but again, I wanna make sure that the Defender looks as fresh as the day it shows up in your driveway, five, 10 years from now. Paint, this is probably one of the things that we're, I'm not gonna say most known for, but highly known for, that we have a number of people that come to, come to the farm here in Sharon Springs, New York. They've gone to other builders and they've looked at their, their builds and then they come and look at our builds and nine times out of 10, they always say, oh my gosh, your paint is so fabulous. It's brilliant, it's lovely. And I'll tell you, that's a way to be able to skimp on a build is through paint, that the paint could look really good in the beginning, but then after you get down the road, about a year, two years, it can start to fade and get dingy. So we do a very extensive process in the paint 
basically the entire truck is well not basically it is the entire truck is disassembled everything's disassembled the wings are pulled off the bonnet is a brand new bonnet we don't so this is all new wings are pulled off grills off bumpers are off the doors are off all of the trim is off the windshields out everything it's completely taken down to a shell and we are painting the inside basically the back side and the front and we're doing a multi-stage process we're covering it with an epoxy we're making sure that everything is perfect and then we're primering it we're sanding it we're getting it perfect so everything's perfect because if you pinch and zoom on our pictures you'll really be able to see how perfect the lines are that our lines are all consistent through the builds and you'll also see that there is no waviness there's no dimples there's nothing because we're creating the perfect Helderberg build so if we need to replace a wing because it has a little bit of a ripple or a ding keep in mind these trucks are 25 plus years old we just replace the part the doors we're replacing those so you don't have the galvanic corrosion so there's a lot of new parts on here. The under the door sills here, that's all replaced too. So paint is a big, big thing when it comes to a Helderberg Defender because it's important that it will last for many years. So talking about the paint, moving on down. Wheels and tires, that's another thing that we talk about on this build process. This one has what's called a wolf wheel. This is a 16 inch steel wheel. And you'll see on some of my other builds, where the wheel is painted the body color. That's part of the design process. That's some of the stuff that we talk about on that build. These tires are an all-terrain tire, so they're equally good for off-road and on-road. They're quiet and they have a, a tremendous life on them. I mean, they can easily go for 40 to 50,000 miles. They're not noisy. They're just a very nice tire. So sometimes people are saying, well, I, I really want bigger tires. I want more aggressive look. Well, that's part of the design process and we can talk about doing lifts. This truck has absolutely no lift. This is a stock ride height. We did not do the step up bars on it, but we're going to now because it's a little bit to get into. So step up bars are another option. So this Defender worth the galvanized bumper, we're gonna do the step up bars that are going to be white. They'll be painted white and they will have a mahogany tread on top, so all mahogany. This Defender has a wood cargo area, so the cargo area is mahogany, it's a marine grade lacquer with caulk, and the rear door is matching to it also. So just kind of looking at the design, again, I'll, I'll point out how it all flows. The system of this, this soft top system, I want you to really understand here what's going on. This is an internal, system internal soft top so what i mean by that is an external system which you might know as an nas spec north american spec the other option would be doing an external roll bar where you would have a black bar that's on the outside of the windscreen comes down goes across goes back up and it goes into the soft top right up here that black bar that comes out wraps around that is an actual roll cage. This build does not have a roll cage in it. It's, it's basically a two-door pickup truck with a cage system that holds the soft top in place. So again, there is no roll bar in this. If we wanted to add a roll bar, then that's part of the design option. When we add the roll bar though to this, it makes it look a little more rugged is what it does. And it takes away from the classic looks just a bit but that's an option that we can talk about. The soft top itself is, it, it's pretty quiet. I mean, and it will hold the temperature like the air conditioning or the heat fairly well. If you live in a very cold climate, it's gonna be like a typical, like a convertible is what it's going to be. So the sides roll up, the rear rolls up. You can do that very quickly to roll that up and get some more air going in there. But then the top comes off. This is a one person job. It just has the bottom piece has hard plastic that's sewn in and it just clips under these little tracks. So you unclip it, you pull some Velcro off in the inside, you can have this top off of this Defender in about five minutes. It's that easy. To put the top back on, it's the reverse process and it takes about 10 minutes to put the top back on. So you can have this full soft top or you can opt to actually get a what's called a bimini top. The bimini top would cover the 
the two, you know, the driver and the passenger in the front, and then it just has straps that go down to the back. So you could actually have two tops. The option of having a soft top and a hard top is really not an option. Uh, there's really no companies that meet the quality control that Helderberg that we want that is a soft top and a hard top design. So it's really a choice. Do you want a hard top or do you want a soft top? But again, with soft top, you can have the full soft top and a bimini top. You can switch the two in and out or you can have a hard top. Yes, you can take the hard top off if you choose to, but it's not an easy process. It's heavy and um, you, then you have to deal with the rear door because on a hard top, the rear door is tall. On this one, you have a half a door. So moving along to kind of explain, and again, you'll just see all the billet aluminum pieces that we do here. This is an upgrade option, of course. Um, we do the, the black anodized. I do that on almost all of my builds. I don't care for the painted hinges, reason being that the paint can chip easily. Even on a 2021 or 2022 Jeep, where they have this hinge style, the paint chips off of those hinges. It just doesn't seem to hold as well. So that's something to consider. This door, I want you to notice this door on this build is a traditional door. It has a traditional handle, which you'll notice is billet aluminum. You have another option when we're doing a soft top that the door handle is actually recessed. It's a little lever that's built in. So if you wanna see what I'm talking about, Look at Santorini, the D90 that's on the website. It's that red D90 soft top that we have, and you'll see how the door handle is different, and you'll also see how the roll bar is an external roll bar, that black bar that's on the outside of the truck. So a little different, a little more rugged looking. This is a little more classic looking. So continuing on where I talked about the wing and having the checker plate, you can also opt to have checker plate below the doors. This is below the door sill. We can put checker plate down here. I prefer the actual, there's a, basically they're called rock sliders, but it's a, uh, it's a metal tubular bar or actually rectangular bar that goes under the door. So this piece of aluminum would come off and we would replace it with this rectangular solid piece of aluminum while it's hollow, but it's more durable and it wears really well. A caution to consider when you do that checker plate that goes right here, it's basically screwing to this and it seems to catch a lot of dirt and grime and sand and mud and eventually can cause some corrosion too. So, that's really kind of the exterior. Um, the mud flaps on this one that you can see in the pictures on the website, of course, are the classic Land Rover that have the Land Rover logo on them in white. So again, just to recap quickly, when we're doing the design process, we talk about a multitude of colors, whatever color that you want on the exterior and how we mix and match, whether we do the bonnet a different color, the arch is a different color, the top, we can do different colors. This one's beige. We can do a brown. We can do a black top when it's talking about, when we're talking about soft tops. We talk about the hinges, how we're going to do the hinges. Um, we talk about the grill, the headlights, the headlight surrounds, the front bumper, the wheels, the tires, whether or not we do the checker plate, um, the arches. We could actually opt to lift this truck and take it up about three inches would be about the max that you would want to take one which again, look on the website with Enzo. Enzo is a three inch suspension lift. So that's plenty of lift for, you just trust me, it's plenty of lift. So that's the exterior options. So now we're gonna move over here. I'm gonna open the door and I'm gonna show you some of the interior options. But if I didn't touch anything, um, then just ask the question and we'll go from there. All right, so let's move into the interior of Verbosca, the D90. So again, we've talked about the paint, we've talked about the exterior, we're gonna talk a little bit about the interior, but I wanna point out a couple things, some questions that I get asked all the time. The first one being about financing. Can you finance one of these vehicles? Answer is yes, but if you're going to do financing, the best way to do it is to do a personal loan to be able to finance it. A car loan is not really possible when we're doing the build process because we're building in England and then we're bringing it into the States, so we have to, take it through customs and the EPA and then get all the paperwork and you need a title and we don't get a title until it comes into the state. So that's the financing part. The next part is, 
all of our defenders are built to order. So when you see me sharing a defender on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, or whatever it might be, that defender is not for sale. That was built for a client that's been waiting an average of 12 to 14 months. So we don't stock defenders, like an inventory of defenders, because the Helderberg Defender is in such high demand, there is no way for us to be able to build defenders for stock just because every every build slot that we have and every defender is being built for a client. And again, it takes an average of 12 to 14 months at the time of recording this video. A soft top is generally a little faster, but when we're building, for example, a D90 hard top, a D110, we're on an average of 3,000 hours of build time. So that's about how long it takes to build one of these defenders. Let me point out some other stuff. When we're doing the builds, it's not like we're just picking parts off of a shelf, mass produced parts. The vast majority, well, I'm not even gonna say the vast majority, all of the parts on our defenders are built by craftsmen. And generally these craftsmen are little shops. They're little shops where it's like one, like a one man shop or maybe two individuals that's in a shop or as many as four individuals in a shop. So again, there, everything is being custom built for our defenders. Everything from the gas cap, this is not mass produced. The interior is not mass produced. Nothing is mass produced. The only thing you will see mass produced on a defender are those bumpers that I told you I don't care for. And, and of course the KBX plastic grills, those are pretty much mass produced. But Helderberg, some of the things that we do we have some really unique characteristics or a unique style that you won't find on any other builder. And that's, we build a lot of our own parts. Hinges, we do a lot of our own hinges. These hinges are not our, our design. This is another company, Craftsman Shop, very small shop that we work with. But hinges, brakes, exhaust systems, um, engine modifications, there, so there's a lot of things that we're building, headlight surrounds, uh, that is our own design that you can't get anywhere else. So I just want to talk about that. So moving into the interior, we do have different options in leather. We can do a single color leather. We can do a two color leather, like a two tone. Let's say like we're going to do a black and a chestnut, or we can do a chestnut and a tweed. Um, yes, we can actually do wool. Uh, it, not only in the seats, but on the doors. So uh, we have a lot of options there. We can do, this is a basket weave. And again, you can see more pictures of this build just by going to Heldeberg.com and looking at Verbosca the D90. So this is a basket weave Defender style seat, which is not like a bucket seat. It has a separate headrest. The leather that we get, the leather is, um, we have some leather that it's, it's coming from a tannery either in Scotland or it's coming from Italy, but we have an exclusive contract we just did that we have our own leather design that's coming out now. And you'll be able to see if it's our own leather design. And the leather that we're using is just done in a different process, different tannery. And the reason that we did that is we want it to really hold up to a dog's fingernails. Fingernails? Well, you know what I mean. Toenails, not fingernails, but you get what I mean. So it really holds up to a lot of wear and scratches and stuff. To determine if it's the Helderberg exclusive leather, you will see an H that's embroidered on the headrest that's the same color as the leather. So it's not really noticeable, but it's there, and that's how you tell if it's the Helderberg exclusive leather. So moving in, seat styles. I have four different seat styles. Uh, most people end up going with two seat styles, the one being the Puma Premium, which you can see in the builds on Helderberg.com. Elizabeth has Puma Premium seats. A-Rod, the D110, has Puma Premium seats on it. Um, the D90s, Mare, Puma Premium, Winston, Puma Premium seats. They're just a bucket seat. They're highly comfortable. They're very, very comfortable seats. And then we have a different style, which is called our MK2 seat, which you could see on Enzo, the D130. It's a comfortable seat. It hugs you a little more. It has a lumbar support, which looks like a blood pressure cuff a uh, rubber thing that you pump up and it raises the lumbar up. It's a little longer under the legs. But when we're going through the bespoke process, things that I'm asking, questions that I'm asking me or someone else, is how tall are you? What is your sleeve length? 
how much do you weigh? So we're getting an idea of basically how, what's your size? And then we're designing the seat to your size. So if you're a taller person, then of course we're doing a different design. We're also doing extended rails on the seat so the seat can move back farther. So if you're six nine, then we're doing a seat design for you being six foot nine inches. If you're my height, like five eight, then with you know a 33, 34 inch sleeve length, that's important to know because then when we're doing the center cubby, we're raising that center cubby up to the right level. So when you're sitting, then your arm is actually has an armrest and you're not up like this or you're not down like that, that it fits you. So again, Helderberg bespoke, custom built based on how you're gonna use it and who are you as an individual. So plenty of headroom, even if you are 6'9", then you have plenty of headroom. You can wear your Stetson. We can do the extended seat rails. And then you'll see on some of our builds, the rear bulkhead. So it's that piece of metal wall that's behind the seats. We can do a partial cutout where we cut that out, which allows the seat to really recline back farther and will allow you to slide that seat back and recline it to get in the comfortable position. Steering wheels, again, all custom built. The shop that builds the steering wheels, it's a staff of four people. So the design that we do, we have a general design that you'll see with other builders, and then we have a steering wheel design that's exclusive to us that you won't see from any other builder. And that's where we're moving forward to use that steering wheel exclusively. But steering wheel, we have different diameters, like a 15 inch diameter, a 14 inch diameter, or possibly even a 13 inch di diameter if you have a bigger belly. So uh, wood is generally the preferred of what a lot of people like, but we also can do leather wrapped and the leather wrapping is actually hand stitched. So everything, it's bespoke, it's all hand done. So this interior color is a savanna. It's a very light color. It can pick up dirt, there's no doubt, but it's very easy to clean, it's very durable, it, it can take a lot of abuse and look great for years. You will have to condition it, condition it annually, so you're just using some leather conditioner on it. This one does not have the full infotainment system, meaning that it does not have Apple CarPlay, backup camera, Sirius Bluetooth, and all that stuff, because we opted for the classic look. Keep in mind, that is an option. We can definitely do that. We can do a seven inch touch screen where you can have your Android play, your Apple Car play, your backup camera, uh, satellite radio, hands-free calling. You can have all of that. But this is a beach runner. We have a Marshall amp speaker in here, which is Bluetooth, which by the way, does sound really good. Uh, but it is one speaker. You cannot add additional speakers, but we custom fit it into this cubby box and we do have three different type of cubby boxes. The center cubby box being, you know, where you put your arm, where you store stuff. Even though we have the Marshall lamp in here, you still have plenty of space. And inside this cubby box, there is two USB ports so you can charge your phone. On the center console here, this build, while it is classic and it is a beach runner, we wanted to put some stuff into it. Um, for example, on the doors, you will not see the window cranks. That's because it has power windows and central door locks on it. And that's where we put it right here. We've kept it very clean, very simple. So we have a 12 volt, we have power windows for both sides, and then we have a USB port along with the USB port here. Continuing on, leather door panels. These are called, are you ready for the trivia? Door cards. So this is called a door card, not a door panel. So when we talk about door cards, bonnets, and wings, and then of course the arches on the side, those are called eyebrows. But anyway, so we can do the different designs of the leather. I always say, well, in fact, that's all I do is when I do a build, you have to do leather because it just looks dingy when you don't do leather because the door card is just a hard plastic with a fake leather texture in it. And it's just really nice to have the hand stitching and this leather is put over a layer of foam and then the door card itself is actually backed with butyl rubber and foam so it gives more density and then the back side is covered with plastic so if the water gets down in there it keeps your leather from getting wet the furnishings on the door this is a brushed aluminum i can also do a black aluminum and can also do wood so on this brushed one, we can do them where it actually has a leather wrap right here, or we can leave it clean. Again, brushed aluminum, black or wood, with or without a leather wrap. 
The door pegs, these are called pegs. These are actually, we do these in brushed aluminum. These are options to upgrade for the door pegs. This is a standard that I always do, but we can do the aluminum and then the back plate here in aluminum, silver or black. So there's your options there. The door card itself, we can do a nice clean leather with no diamond stitch, no basket weave, just very clean. So that's an option here to do it that way. So very clean design. The dash, this one actually has leather on the dash top and dash sides. So we have the option to, and this is another thing that I do on all of the builds. It's wrapped in foam, so it's very plush. It's not just a hard plastic, because that's what it is originally. It's just a hard plastic with a fake leather grain to it. So foam, all hand stitched, and then here hand stitched. And then you'll notice on all the Helderberg Defenders, we carry the exterior color and the inside by right here. This is called the glove tray. This is an opening. This is the way our dashes look, other than if we're doing the infotainment center, which you'll see in some of our other builds, which is right there in the center. So we carry the color in. This one has the underslung air conditioning unit. So this is a standard option, and you can have this option, or which is a good air conditioning system, but understand your air conditioning, cold air, is that's all this does. It doesn't do heat, it's strictly air conditioning, and the vents are blowing up this way. Your heat is up here, that blows up the windscreen and that's all it is, is heat. So this is a base model version right here. You can do the upgraded model, which is exclusive to Helderberg. I've not seen any other builders do it, but we fabricated, we've created our own air conditioning heat system where we combine the two together. So when you have the heat and the air combined together, like we've done, you do not have this underslung unit which gives you more leg space, more leg room. It just, it cleans up the cabin, looks much cleaner. And then you have a high efficient air conditioning and heating system with the Helderberg exclusive unit. So we use the existing vents. So we're not adding stuff in there that doesn't look good. And then the air conditioning heat is 10,870 BTU, which is large enough to actually cool a room in a house that's 600 square feet. It's not 600 square feet in here, point being it works really well. The heating unit is 12,470 BTU, meaning it will keep you very warm. So if you have a D90 with a soft top, it's going to work really well. If you have a D110 wagon, it's going to work really well. It's going to make sure that your, your passengers are in the back that are also comfortable even if you live in a very hot climate. So that's the exclusive unit. So to kind of recap on that. Um, we can do all leather, leather through meaning all leather. The lower dash can be done on leather too, instead of just this black hard plastic. We automatically do the leather top, the leather sides. Our seats are all leather. We do not offer vinyl. So it's leather and tweed, leather and Alcantara, or just all leather. You can do basket weave, you can do diamond stitch, or you can do no pattern at all that would just be a standard seat, which you could see that looking at Hayrod, which is the D110 on the website, or you can see that by looking at Aniran, which is a D90 soft top. We just did black leather with no, you know, no decorative stitching. Center cubby, we can do diamond stitch, checker, or a basket weave or no stitching at all. So you have everything in here. You have your USB power. Uh, it's, uh, you have different carpet options now too. That's something new that we're offering. So you have 15 different carpet options, meaning color. You can go with the standard black. You can go with blue, browns, grays, greens, whatever you wanna do. So there's carpet options. That is an upgrade, it's an additional fee. So. I think that pretty much covers everything in the interior, except maybe the gauges. The gauges, our gauges are LED backlit. So all of our gauges are black gauges with white numbers and they have LED lighting. So it's known that a Land Rover Defender gauges are hard to see and um, we fixed that problem. And that's what you'll see on a lot of Helderberg Defenders. We've been doing this for so long. I've been very passionate. I'm sure you guys know that that I've gone through and I found all of the weak points of a Defender and we've fixed them. So let's kind of talk about that briefly because I get asked a lot of times of what's different about a Helderberg Defender and it's the performance parts. When we're building a Helderberg Defender, 
what we do that's different is we don't go back with those original Land Rover OEM original equipment parts because those parts are really a 40 to 60 year old design. We fabricated a lot of our own parts or we've worked with craftsmen to create parts that are modern design, meaning the suspension is a modern design. We use polyurethane bushings, we use modern shocks, whether it's a Bilstein shock, whether it's a Fox shock, and our shocks are designed specifically for the weight of the vehicle. The springs that we use are a modern spring, a progressive spring, so it's a much more comfortable ride. Our defenders don't ride like trucks. They, they're, the steering is very precise, and you're not jiggling around and bouncing around. It handles really well. Um, depending on the design, like Hayrod, which is designed for the road, but it can definitely do off-road. Hayrod, the D110, my double cab. But it's, it's designed as a bulldog design that you could actually drift it through the corner. So again, this one has Bilstein shocks. It has anti-sway bars, something that you don't see on a lot of builds. The anti-sway bars make the truck handle very well. So when you're going around a corner, you're not getting all this body roll. It just handles, it's very accurate. The gearing in the, in the steering, which it, by the way is a power steering, power assisted steering. So it's not like you need a big steering wheel and you're cranking and you gotta have, I mean, serious guns to be able to turn the wheel. That's not what it is. It's very easy to steer. In fact, if you watch some of my videos, you'll see that I'm off-roading and I'm just like turning it like, you know, really easy with two fingers. And that's what you can do. Transmission-wise, five-speed manual transmission, R380 is what it is. It is a full-time four-wheel drive, but you can lock the transfer case in. And then even when you do that, then you're getting more traction for it. They're great off-road, great in the snow, great in the rain, good on the highways. So it's really nice. So it's five-speed manual transmission. If you want an automatic transmission, yes, that's an option, but I will warn you, I will try to talk you out of it. To, to the very end, I will try to talk you out of an automatic transmission. I mean, yeah, we love building them. I'm gonna charge you more money for an automatic transmission. So you would think, I have the opportunity to make more money with an automatic transmission. Why wouldn't I try to sell that to you? And that's because the vast majority of the clients that we've done an automatic transmission for, even though I've tried to talk them out of it and they said, I've never driven a standard transmission or I have a lot of city traffic and I don't want to be changing gears all the time. After they got that automatic transmission, they're like, oh man, because the automatic transmission is a weak point of a Defender, meaning that the design of it is an older design and it really takes the life out of the truck. It becomes very slow. It's just not as much fun to drive. And I, you know, if I was trying to sell you something, I would tell you what you want to hear, but I'm telling you what you need to hear. So I know I'm harping on that a bit. Five-speed manual transmission, and we do things to that clutch that makes the clutch very easy, that even if, you know, if you're wearing heels, that you'll be able to use that clutch very easy. And then just based on the design of this diesel, being a diesel, it has a lot of low end torque. So you're not constantly having to change gears. And it's not like where you tried to learn how to drive a manual transmission on a Nissan or a Toyota or a Honda that it was very jerky when you were having a hard time driving it. So if you've never driven a manual transmission, we will actually teach you how to drive a manual transmission. And I'll tell you, it's so much fun to be able to drive a manual transmission. And chances are, I mean, do you have more than one vehicle? Probably so. So do something that's classic. When you add the automatic transmission, which is gonna cost you about $12,000 more, it will actually depreciate the cost of the Defender. If you went to sell it, people are going to want the manual transmission because that's true classic Defender. So that's the front part of the interior. I think I made it clear on the transmissions. Let's move to the rear and let's talk about the seating in the rear. So we're at the rear of Verboska, the D90. And again, just go to heldenberg.com. You can see more detailed pictures, more videos. This is supposed to be your informative video. So starting at the rear, you'll see the rear tire carrier. That just comes on our builds. We automatically do the rear tire. Um, of course, we can opt not to do that because you have to ask yourself, if you get a flat tire, are you really going to change the tire or are you gonna wreck it? So it's up to you. But anyway, the rear tire carrier, simple process. I mean, to just open it up. This is on the soft top. The rear tire carrier is a different design on a vehicle, on a Defender that's not a soft top. So this opens up 
and now you've got this rear half door. So rear half doors, normally a D90, a hard top would have a full door. So if you were to take the hard top off, you'd have this big door sticking up here. It's got the latch, it's locking. We go from there, we open up the door. This one, Verboska, does have the wood cargo area. So this is a marine grade, this is a mahogany. It was actually off of a boat. And so it's mahogany, it has multiple layers of lacquer, and then it has a marine grade caulk. And then what's interesting about the caulk and the lacquer is over time, the caulk starts to change colors a little bit, meaning that it gets more of a yellowish tone because of that lacquer. It just it gets a patina. And then, of course, you see the wood burn right through here that says Helderberg on the wood floor. So this is an option. And then the option is here, the little cleats that are under the seats that are also in mahogany with the polished silver screw washers. So now here's you, ha you have two options here when it comes to the seating in the rear of a D90 or a D110. I will point out, I want you to pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say. The rear cargo area is the same size in a D90 as it is in a D110, same size. And if you wanna know all the measurements, I have other videos for that, so watch those videos and you can see the length and the height and the width and all that stuff. While a D90, or a D110 does look large, I'll give you kind of a perspective of size. A D90, D90 is a three door D, it's a three door is what it is. So you see two doors, but the rear is the three doors. It's about the size of a Jeep, except it's a little wider. So what's it like to drive a D90? It's a lot like driving a Jeep, except it feels more planted, meaning you feel more stable on the road and the steering's a little more precise. Uh, Power-wise, it's a lot like a Jeep is the way it drives. So not the, the crazy horsepower Jeep, but just a standard like a Jeep Wrangler. So seating options, you have two options. You have the center-facing bench seats. That's what this is. There is seat belts for four. So this is the seating option that I prefer the most for a number of reasons. One of the reasons being it's the most classic. It's kind of true defender feel. And you'll be amazed that I'll have couples that will come over to go out to dinner with Christy and I, and they're like, Paul, you drive. We want to sit in the back. And I'm like, okay, whatever you want. So this is the most classic. This is going to give you also a little more room because now your passengers, four passengers can sit in the back and they have a little room to slide side to side and they have more knee room. The other option would be the center facing bucket. So if you can imagine a bucket seat here and a bucket seat there and there and there that faces the lumbar, the lower part of the seat, not the lumbar, but the lower part of the seat, the seat pan comes out a little farther. It takes away some knee room. So if you have adults back here, it gets a little, a little, you know, basically it's, it's a little tight is what it is. These do fold up. Um, you really don't need to fold them up because they're not, you don't really gain much room at all. And if you fold up, it's not really usable, but they do fold up as do the center facing buckets. So you can fold that up, pull it out, whatever. Another option is you just don't put any seats. And you'll see a lot of my builds that don't have any seats back here. Well, on the D110, that is. And that's because the client that we built it for, they don't have passengers that are going to be in the back. And they want to keep it open for their hobbies, their activities, whether it be hunting, fishing, whatever it is, golf or whatever. So D110, you already have all the seating in the front. Watch one of the other videos to learn more about that. So... That's your two options, center-facing buckets or center-facing buck, uh, you know, center bucket or center-facing bench. Um, you're probably wondering, well, I've seen forward-facing seats in the D90. Yes, that is an option. Yes, we can do that, but I will warn you that those forward-facing buckets are quite heavy. And to be able to get to them, I mean, they're, they're not full-width full seats, but to be able to get to them, you have to enter through the back, just like you do here. But folding them up is quite heavy, and it's an expensive upgrade. So to be able to do the forward facing is about a $5,000 premium, roughly, at least, at least right now for doing this video. It could definitely go up from there. But it, they're heavy. They're hard to manage. Um, I've smashed and cut my finger a number of times on those forward facing buckets, trying to fold them up and fold them down and everything else. I'm surprised I haven't lost a finger on one. But anyway, 
So that's the rear of a D90. And again, the cargo area in a D90 is the same size as a cargo area in a D110, but you get the additional space in a D110 by the second row seating, which you can have two passengers with a center cubby or three passengers, and you have a couple different seating options on that. So this one, mahogany trim, leather, and we can match those rear seats. Like if you had a diamond stitch or a basket weave on the front, we could do the diamond stitch basket weave, same stitching on these seats here to give you that look, that feel. And again, this does not have a roll bar system in it. What it does is it just has the roll, uh, basically a, a, you know, a, what do you call it? A, a, just bars to hold your top. Having, having a brain fart there, but anyway, so there you go. I hope this video proved helpful on Verboska the D90. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us, but be sure and check out the FAQ tab on our website where I've done several videos that talks about the Defender lifestyle, and hopefully I've covered everything that you could ever think of when it comes to owning a Defender, such an iconic classic vehicle that just makes people smile.